Welcome back again, guys, to Southern Sorcery, where we are still finishing out the Bloomboro pre-cons. Man, these have been so much fun. I'm super excited about this one today. It is the Family Matters pre-con. Uh, this is the bird that makes tokens. Boy, does it look so fun. So let's go ahead and check him out and see what he does. Before that, though, quickly, we are giving this pre-con away. All you've got to do to enter is be subscribed to our channel, uh, like the video, and then jump down into the comments after you finish watching the video and let us know what card we missed that absolutely belongs in this deck. As always, we are adhering to a $50 budget for this upgrade, and we don't take out any of the cards from the pre-con that were made specifically for this deck. Even if you're not interested in trying to win this pre-con, we are a small YouTube channel. We love doing this. We love giving stuff away. If you're here and you're enjoying the video or have enjoyed any of our videos in the past, please consider liking and subscribing. This helps us out a ton. It goes a long, long way. And if you want to talk to us, we do reply in the comments. So if you have questions about anything or if you're a new player and you don't understand something, please just jump down there. We will respond to that. We read all of your comments and we respond to all of them as well. So let's take a look at Xenia, Valley's Voice. This is a 1-3 bird bard for a red, a white, and a blue. And it has flying and says, Xenia, Valley's Voice gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of other creatures you control with base power of one and then the more important of the two is creature spells you cast have offspring too um, offspring is a new mechanic in this set you have seen it potentially before but it is named now and it is called offspring and there are different offspring costs a lot of the cards in this set from bloomboro have that mechanic kind of like ward has different costs this one also has different costs but essentially you pay whatever that cost is. In this case, it is two generic mana. And says, as you cast a creature spell, if you do, when that creature enters, create a 1-1 token copy of it. So that is always the effect, no matter what the cost is. Different cards just have different costs, but they all have the same payoff, which is a token copy of a creature. Once you cast it in an ETBs, you can pay whatever the offspring cost is to make a 1-1 token copy of that creature. So what this deck wants to do is absolutely play into the token generation. We want to abuse that. We want to abuse ETBs off of those copies. And that's exactly what this deck is built to do. We're going to flood the board with amazing tokens of lots of creatures that we cast and we are going to just find ways to abuse that and use those tokens to our advantage and overrun and overwhelm our opponents for the win. And quickly, just some real quick stats about this deck once we made our upgrades to it. We've got 22 card draw spells. We have got 10 cards that make tokens, including our commander. So that's going to be repeatable as long as we find ways to keep our commander on the battlefield. We've also got four potential game closing cards, so ways to finish out the game or win cons. We also have 13 ramp spells, so we've got quite a bit of ramp because we want to be able to have plenty of mana to make those copies by paying in that two generic mana, so a little ramp heavy. We've got 36 lands, and then finally we've got six removal spells. That includes spot removal and board wipes. Also want to give a quick shout out to our patrons. You guys are awesome. We do lots of great things for them. We do tons of giveaways and box breaks, so super cheap packs if you all are interested in buying magic and having that opened up on our channel. Consider becoming a patron. Also, if you just want to support us, we've got a support tier for like two bucks, so we appreciate every Everything our patrons do for us. Thank you guys so, so much. So let's go ahead and jump into our additions and our subtractions. After goldfishing the deck a bunch of times as the standard pre-con, the way Wizards made it, I really felt like there was a lack of card draw in this deck, especially when your commander doesn't generate any card draw. So we went a little heavy on that in the upgrade. And so first up, we've got Benny Brax, Zoologist. This is great in a tokens deck. Benny Brax is three in a white and has Convoke, so you can tap other tokens to uh you know and other creatures to cast him so um you're probably never going to actually end up paying three and a white for benny brax and he says at the beginning of each end step if you made a token this turn draw a card and for that we removed angel of ruins which is a seven drop it is a little bit of removal but it's a little on the expensive side and in the late game 
Um, we probably don't want to be spending that much mana. Um, it does have plane cycling for two, so you can discard this card and go find a planes and then put it into your hand. We've got plenty of other ramp in here, so in the early game, probably also not great ramp as it just puts a planes into your hand. It doesn't even actually get it onto the battlefield, so um, that one was an easy cut for us. Next, we've got Impact Tremors. Impact Tremors is super good. It says every time a creature enters a battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. Um, this can get out of control quickly we've got some ways to make mass amounts of tokens in this deck potentially you know 8 10 12 a turn you're talking about a lot of damage coming down from impact trimmers and we decided to remove the double spell here dusk and dawn which is a uh, board wipe for creatures with power three or greater and then dawn you can cast it aftermath from the graveyard and you can return all creatures with power two or less to your hand an interesting board wipe and recursion built into one, but it's still gonna get rid of all of our tokens. So we don't really want that. Next, we've added Welcoming Vampire. This is two and a white for a vampire with flying. It is a two, three and says whenever one or more other creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This triggers only once each turn. So again, you're going to probably be making copies on every turn, on all of your turns, and those token copies are going to come in as one ones, so you're gonna be guaranteed cards off of that. And if you can make a copy of Welcoming Vampire when you cast it, then it's gonna trigger twice. We've decided to remove Inferno Titan. It's just a mana heavy creature. That's a six six with no evasion. And it says when it attacks, it deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. So a versatile card, but not one that belongs here. Next, we've added Idol of Oblivion. This is an artifact for two, and it says, tap this to draw a card. Activate only if you created a token this turn. We are gonna be making lots of tokens on lots of turns. Um, so this is almost a guaranteed card draw on every turn. And for that, we removed Sun Titan, the other Titan that was in this deck. Um, again, it's another 6 drop for a 6-6, six, six, and uh, when it ETBs or attacks, you can return a target permanent from your graveyard to the battlefield, mana value 3 or less. So a good card, but um, again, just a little on the bigger side, uh, being 6 mana. Next, we decided to add Skull Clamp. Since we're making all these 1-1s, one we may want to equip Skull Clamp to a 1-1, one -one, and when it dies, we'll be able to draw 2 cards. Skull Clamp is one of the best card draw engines in this game. We also have a lot of ways to make other tokens outside of making the copies of our creatures. We have a lot of creatures that come in and on their own. When they ETB, you make a 1-1, one -one, so you could get rid of those 1-1 one -one vanillas as well um, with Skull Clamp. And to make space for that, we remove Siege Gain Commander, which is 3 red red. When it enters, make 3 1-1 one -one Goblin creature tokens. Uh, don't worry, we've got plenty of other ways to make 1-1s, one -one, so we're not going to miss the Siege Gang Commander. Next, we have Witty Roastmaster. It is also a pinger. It is two in a red, and it says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Witty Roastmaster deals one damage to each opponent. So just another way to continue with the token ETBs being able to turn that into damage against our opponents. And for that, we remove Time Wipe, which was another uh, semi-board wipe. It's two white, white, and a blue, and it says return a creature you control to its owner's hand, then destroy all creatures. Next, we've added Storm Carved Coast. This is a land that enters tapped unless you control two or more other lands. Lands that enter untapped, under certain conditions this one is almost always able to meet as long as you start with a three land hand you're going to be able to uh have this come in untapped so much better than some of those other untapped lands that we had one of those being thriving heath um, we did remove all of the thriving cycle from this they enter the battlefield tapped and when they do choose a color other than what they are and then you can add a mana of of the original color or the chosen color so they are decent for mana fixing that being said this and the temple cycle should be the very first thing you remove from the mana base so if you've got some of these other conditional lands or better lands or shock lands or whatever you're laying around that's not in a deck the first thing you can do is swap those out just get rid of all those lands that that come in tap no matter what um, with lands that are at least conditional. And if you've got duels, all the better. Next, we've added Mentor of the Meek. This is a human for two and a white. And whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay one generic mana if you do draw a card. So since we're going to be making these copies of one ones, um, we should have access then to extra card draw from Mentor of the Meek. Very good. And we got rid of Giselle Goldmane, which is two white white for a cat warrior. Has first strike. Um, it's a 4-4, and you can pay three white-white into it. Attacking creatures you control get plus X, plus X until the end of turn. 
where X is the number of attacking creatures. So potentially very good. Uh, however, no evasion granted on that ability, so you're paying five into it, and they can all be jump blocked. Our next addition is Song of the World Soul. This is a really cool enchantment that says whenever you cast a spell, populate. So populate is a mechanic in Magic that says create a token of a creature token you control. And since we're not just making like 1-1 one, one vanilla creatures, we're making copies of awesome stuff. That means we can copy those again. That means we can get those ETB effects again. And it doesn't have to be the creature you're casting. It doesn't even have to be a creature spell. Just anytime we cast a spell with this out, we can for free make a copy of anything that's already a token. This does some serious work in this deck. This is a uh, potential game winner. I mean, you, you can cast... Artifacts, you can cast anything. Ramp spells, uh, ponder, this can get abusive quickly, especially when you're making copies of really good stuff. And to make space for that, we removed Pull From Tomorrow. It is an X spell, it is X blue blue, for an instant that says draw X cards, then discard a card. We put in more repeatable card draw on creatures that we can copy. Um, with our commander as opposed to some of these one shots uh, We did add in a better one shot as well. We'll get to that in a minute um, We also added talisman of progress again. We want ramp. We want to be able to pay into our commander um, And make the copies of these creatures as we're casting them and so we removed some land and added an artifact here um, because you can only play one land a turn. This way we can ramp. And to make space for that, we removed Aetherize. Aetherize is a really good card. Um, it is return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. Really fun combat trick when you can pull it off. However, it does cost four mana and you're essentially sitting there waiting on someone to attack you all out to make it worth the while. And so it ends up sitting in your hand uh, more often than not. Next, we've added Rumor Gatherer. This is also another really consistent card draw card in this deck. Rumor Gatherer is an elf wizard uh, for one white white. It is a 2-1 and it has Alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, draw a card instead. So again, we uh, have Rumor Gatherer out. We cast another creature, we pay the two to make the 1-1 one, one token copy of that creature, and then now that ability has resolved two times. So you're essentially, every turn, consistently going to be able to scry one and then draw a card from Rumor Gatherer. It's really good in this deck. Uh, and to make space for that, we removed Thopter Engineer. It's two and a red, and it says when it enters the battlefield, make a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter Artifact Creature Token of Flying. Artifact creatures you control have haste. We just don't have a ton of artifact creatures, so the payoff for this isn't isn't as good as some other stuff. We also added Professional Facebreaker. This one is super good in this deck as well. It's two and a red for a human warrior with menace and says whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. And then you can sacrifice a treasure to exile the top card of your library, and you may play that card this turn. So for two and a red, we're going to get a menace creature, and then whenever we deal combat damage to our opponents, we're going to make treasures. So it potentially three as as long as you have three opponents as long as you can get through and then when you sack the treasure that generates some card advantage as well so if you're in a bind and you need some card draw and you don't have it you can sack a treasure instead look at that next top card of your library and you can play that this turn to make space for a professional face breaker we took out martial coup it is an another x spell it's x white white and it says create x one one white soldier tokens and if X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. So another board wipe. I don't love board wipes in go wide token decks. It kind of defeats the purpose, so we, we took that one out. Next, we have War Leader's Call. It is one red and a white, and it says creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So this is a buff for your whole team. And then whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, War Leader's Call deals one damage to each opponent. So yet another way to ping our opponents as we are making all of these tokens. And to make space for that, we got rid of Stolen by the Fey, another X spell, it's X blue blue. Return target creature with converted mana cost of X to its owner's hand. You create X one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. Again, this is kind of another gotcha moment. The problem is though, you need to be able to pay into this big time for it to really pay off. We've got a lot of other ways to make 1-1 one, one tokens, so uh, this just didn't seem necessary. Next, we have added Ponder. It is one blue to look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order. Um, you can shuffle, so if you don't like any of what you have on top, you can just shuffle and then draw a card. So you can put them back in any order, putting what you want to draw back on top, or again, if you don't like what you've got, you can shuffle and then um, get a new card. So a very versatile card um, for one blue. 
And I'm breaking my rule here, guys. I'm removing Fortune Teller's talent. We have a rule of not removing any cards printed specifically for this new pre-con, but this card has sat in my hand so many times. And then even if I have an extra blue laying around to cast it, this is Fortune Teller's talent, a new card. Uh, it's an enchantment class, it's one blue. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. That's fine. You pay three and a blue into it to level it up to level two. As long as you've cast a spell this turn, you may play cards from the top of your library. So you already have to have cast a spell this turn to be able to do so. And then lastly, you level it up to level three for two and a blue, and it says spells you cast anywhere other than your hand cost two less to cast. This requires an eight mana investment in total to get to that level three for the payoff. And for what the payoff is, this is just absolutely not worth it. I've never found myself paying into this. I've wanted to make copies of other creatures. I, ne I just, it doesn't make any sense in this deck. It had to come out, so sorry. And 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 it may belong in some, some other deck, but it, just not this one. I just couldn't do it. I broke my rule. Next up, we've got Arcane Denial. This is a counter spell, one in a blue. Counter target spell, its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep and then you draw a card at the beginning of the next, turn, next turn's upkeep. So another little card draw for us, sort of. Arcane Denial is just very good because it counters a target spell, and then you get to draw a card. So it's it's good for one and a blue. To make space for that, we got rid of Thriving Grove, and then we added a card from Lord of the Rings. It's Rising of the Day. Creatures you control have haste. Legendary creatures you control get plus one, plus oh. Um, giving these tokens haste is awesome as they come in, and Rising of the Day is like a 40 cent card. So this was kind of a no-brainer to put in there. Uh, we also removed Thriving Bluff to make space for that. We have also added Nesting Dovehawk. This is three and a white for a bird. is a 2-2 with flying at the beginning of combat on your turn. Populate. So again, Populate says make a token copy of another token you already control. And then it says whenever a creature token enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nesting Dovehawk. Nesting Dovehawk is going to get massive in this deck has flying, so potentially you can swing this in for a whole bunch of damage once you've made a few tokens. And to make space for that, we got rid of Illusory Ambusher. It's four and a blue, has flash. It says whenever Illusory Ambusher is dealt damage, draw that many cards. So essentially you would want to flash this in for five, put it in front of something large that's blocking, and then draw a whole bunch of cards because it's only a four one, so it's not going to live long enough to block more than one time. Five mana is just a heavy investment on a creature card that has flash, that maybe you want to flash it in. Again, this just ended up in my hand so many times, not wanting to cast it, wanting to hold it, and then the opportunity to use it never never came. And then our last addition is going to be Faramir, Prince of Athelion. This is two white blue for a uh, another creature from Lord of the Rings. At the beginning of your end step, choose an opponent. At the beginning of that player's next end step, you draw a card if that player did not attack you that turn. Otherwise, create three 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens. So once a turn cycle, we're going to at least draw a card or make three 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens. So um, card draw and or tokens felt better than some of these other options that we had that were just tokens. So that is going to round it out for our additions and our subtractions. Uh, this deck was maybe the most complete and felt the most cohesive straight out of the box. However, all these pre-cons are a ton of fun. If you're interested in winning any of the other pre-cons from Bloomboro, go check out the rest of our videos. Uh, we will put the playlist right here for you guys. We're giving all four of them away, so all you got to do to enter for those is jump into the corresponding videos, give it a watch, and then let us know what cards you would put in that we missed and just, you know, whatever you love about the deck. Get in there and talk to us. Ask us about why we upgraded what we did or what we left out or just talk about Bloomberg or Magic in general. And new players, don't be afraid to ask any questions. We are happy to jump in there and answer those. We will respond to all of your comments. So again, do all those YouTube things. Smash the like button. Give us a subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you catch up on our next videos. We also are on all the other usual social medias, all of these things that are flashing across the screen right now. We're in all of those places as well. Um, head over to our Discord if you want to play live games with us. We do streams on Twitch so you can come and hang out with us in real life via webcam. Uh, we would love to meet you. Thanks again so much, guys. We hope you have an awesome night, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. All right, you guys stuck around to the very end. Thanks so much for doing so. 
So here's a little tidbit that uh, we can't put in the $50 budget version of this video, so we'll just stick it here. But O'Hare Talk from Lost Caverns of Exelon triples your creature tokens. That is an absolute MVP in this deck if you can afford it or if you've got a copy laying around. You can also have things like Panharmonicon, uh, Annoying Procession, Mondrak Glory Dominus. All of these are going to double up your effects, either double up your tokens or Panharmonicon is going to double up those ETBs, which we have got a ton of ETB effects. So just a way to further abuse that. So anyway, see you guys in the next one. Cover up your mouth Scream, I cry, I cry, I cry